Real World Computer Programming for Kids, Step 36, Basic SQL. The last step provided an introduction to databases. The next thing to learn is some examples of the language used to talk to databases, SQL. After that, in the following step, we will go into the actual creation of a database, which we will use to demonstrate practical uses for the various SQL commands. The key SQL statements we will use are select, insert, update, and delete. Select is used to query the database. For example, this SQL statement, select star from states, is the simplest and most straightforward of all. The star stands for all or everything. So what the statement above is saying is, give me everything from the table named states. The results returned will be just what was requested, perhaps even including some columns the user of the data doesn't really want or care about or even understand. Note, the select statement above, besides using the star symbol in the name of the table, states, also uses the keyword from. The from keyword is what is used in SQL to indicate which table or tables in the database you want to read from. Recall that a database normally has multiple tables. You must already have a connection to the database you want to use before issuing a select or any other statement. More on this later. So what if you want to limit the results to only include certain columns rather than all of the columns? In that case, you would issue the command select and then a comma separated list of the columns you want from states. For example, it could be select name, comma, area square miles, comma, population 2020, comma, date admitted from states. This would limit the returned column values to those explicitly listed rather than all star of them. It's a good habit to get into to not use star just because it's quick and easy to do so as it can slow down database performance, not just for you, but for other people using the database also. You can also limit the return data set to just what you are really interested in by using the WHERE clause, which differs from BEAR clause in that they are not as scratchy as the real ones and not as tasty as the fake ones. Limiting the returned data using a WHERE clause filters the data to only return data for a few states. A limited number of states. For example, if you just wanted to see data for the states with a population of more than 10 million residents, you could use this SQL statement. And it select and then lists the columns that we had before from states where population 2020 is greater than 10 million. And that 10 million is without commas. Note, as you may have noticed above, you should not put commas in numbers. The database would not understand what sort of tricky you were up, trickery you were up to and refuse to show you any data at all, wagging its virtual finger at you and telling you that you created a syntax error. To avoid that, just add the correct number sans commas, without the commas. One more thing you might want to do at this point is to sort the results. You can do this by using order by in your SQL, like so. And it shows that SQL statement, same as before, but added at the end, order by population 2020. This will display those records ordered in the default way, which is ASC, ascending. In other words, the state with the lowest population among this limited group, the states with more than 10 million residents, will be first at the top of the list and the one with the greatest population will be last in this particular list. If you want it the other way around, the state with the largest population first, then you need to append DESC, which is short for descending, to the statement like so. And then it shows the same SQL statement 
but with a DESC appended to the end of it. If you really do want the data in ASC or ascending order, you might still want to explicitly append an ASC, even though it isn't required, as a way of commenting your code to show that yes, you really do want to see the default ascending view, not descending. Ascending is from low to high, descending is from high to low. Our SQL statement may look like a bit of confusing jumbled mess to you now. And actually, most SQL is written like the following with each portion of the statement on its own line. And then the SQL statement, the same one, is shown again, but with select on one line, that statement, part of the statement, from on the next line, where on the next line, and order by on the last line with DESC also on that line. Our SQL statement now limits the number of columns returned by not using the star after select. It limits the rows by limiting them to those records for states where the population is over 10 million and sorts the result for you by the column you designated and in the direction you prefer, ascending or descending, to boot. Insert. The next key SQL statement is insert. Its name may make it clear what it does. It adds or inserts a record into a table. By way of example, an insert command for the table we've been using could be insert into states and then on the next line in parentheses, a list of the columns that you want to insert values into. Then on the third line, the word values. And then on the fourth and final line, enclosed within parentheses, each value actual value. The insert statement above inserts a record, a row full of values, into the table named on the first line, states. The values listed on the last line of the statement are inserted into the columns listed in the second line of the statement. Note that the order of the columns listed on line 2 doesn't have to match the order in which the columns appear in the database, but the order of values on the last line must match the order that you specified on the second line. If you were to put a value in the wrong spot, it may seem to work, but not be what you want. For example, if you did this instead, and it shows the same insert statement, but with the area square miles and population values swapped, the record would successfully be inserted into the table because they're both integer values but the data would be wrong as the square miles area SQMI column contains the population figure and the population column population 2020 contains the square miles value. Any other mismatches would just fail and not allow the record to be inserted at all. The name column would accept 1850-09-09 the date admitted value, but would, of course, be a bogus name for a state. If you tried to put the name value where the int values belong, it would not work. If you tried to put the int values where the string or text values belong, it would not work either. The record wouldn't be inserted because there would be a data type mismatch. For example, this would fail. And then it shows an example of the insert statement putting the square miles where the name belongs and vice versa. Because a value that is not enclosed within single quotes would not be accepted in the name column, and a value with single, single quotes would not be accepted in the area square mile column. Update. Sometimes actual data changes. In the real world, that is, not just inside the database. When that happens, you need to update existing data in your database table or tables. You could do a delete of the old record and then an insert of a new one to replace the one you relegated to the dustbin, but it's usually more sensible to simply update the existing record. It may be that there is only one value that needs to change, or that you want to retain the record's ID value, or have some other reason for preferring updating over deleting and inserting. Some common examples of when you would update a record is if the table contained an address or phone number which had changed. 
or say a person changed his name, such as from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, or from Lou Alcindor to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Or in our case, perhaps the name of a state changed. We would take care of that this way. Update states, set name equals Twainiana, where name equals Missouri. In the update statement above, the where clause holds the old or existing value and the set clause contains the new or updated value. Delete. The delete statement can be dangerous. Use it with care and caution. It does exactly what you would expect. It deletes data. It deletes the row or rows you tell it to. Even all the rows in a table, if you're not careful. Here's an example. Let's say you mistakenly thought that Puerto Rico was the 51st state, and you added it to the state's table. Now you find out you were wrong and you want to get rid of that record. You would do so this way. Delete from states where name equals Puerto Rico. With that SQL statement, just that one out-of-place record would be deleted. The other 50 would not be touched. Note, though, that if you forgot to specify a WHERE clause for your delete command, you would obliterate all of the data in the state's table. The following is very destructive and dangerous in that sense. Delete from states. This would delete all the data in the state's table. Beware. Note, reality check. In most cases, the data you obliterated still exists somewhere in a backup. If you ever accidentally delete a lot of data and don't know how to restore it, go see the database administrator, which is sometimes somebody's full-time job, depending on the size of the company and the type of database to use and how much data there is but often just one of the hats that some developer has volunteered to wear. In this case, it would be easiest to just do another insert if, say, Puerto Rico actually did become a full-fledged state after you deleted the record. So, of the four main SQL statements or commands, besides the creates, which we will cover in the next step, namely select, insert, update, and delete, the only one that does not change the contents of the database is SELECT. SELECT only borrows a copy of the data to look at. The other three respectively add, change, or remove data. In our next step in our journey, we will create the so far hypothetical database and its states table and get to work populating it with data, and then slicing and dicing it and even adding calculated runtime columns to it. Until then.